everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Summer. Today we are doing another haircut tutorial and I'm gonna be showing you guys how I go about creating my shag haircuts wolf haircut, modern shag, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna be doing a nice full fringe with a slight curtain bang aspect to it. And then I'm gonna be showing you how I create all those fun layers for lots of movement and lots of texture. We're gonna be leaving the length, so I'll show you how you blend that all in. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, we are gonna get her sectioned off. So I like to just separate the front from the back for starters. So we're gonna come right in, right behind the ear. Push all this hair forward. And for now, we're gonna clip this out of the way and we're gonna repeat the same on the other side. So for the back, we are gonna feel along the client's head. So right when you start getting to the curve of the occipital bone, so right before the nape basically is where you're gonna sort of take your first section and we're just gonna go straight across because again, we're trying to keep the length. So I don't wanna cut any of this out at all. And you're just gonna match that up. And for now, clip the hair out of the way. And then obviously when we get to the back, I will touch on that a little bit more of how we're gonna cut to blend everything in. And then we're just gonna even out over here. And clip. Okay, so now that we have the front and the back separated, what we're gonna do is start creating the section for our fringe. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a full fringe with a little bit where it can split in the middle to kind of create that curtain bang look. Um, you're gonna cut into this a lot, so you'll see a lot of texture and movement, but we're gonna find where we want to make her bang start. So I kind of like to just push the hair forward and you basically wanna go with the curve of the hair when you start kind of fluffing it up, which usually falls right around the arch of their eyebrow is kind of where I like to set my guide with it. Okay, so once you have your section, pull it down in the front to make sure it's kind of laying right. So I wanna bring over just a little bit more right here. So you got almost sort of a nice triangle shape going on. So now that that is that, I'm gonna cut that first and then we're gonna come in and start adding all the hair in. So basically with this haircut, how I'm creating my layers is I'm gonna be pulling everything forward towards me. So this is a really fun haircut. It's a different way to do the layers and shape everything up. So it's nice to kind of have for a change of pace. So to cut her first bang, I'm gonna do a section right here. I wanna create a good amount of a guide for myself. I don't like to just pull everything down and start cutting. You wanna make sure you're doing small enough sections that way you see your guide, that way you never lose your guide. All right, so before I cut here, I'm kinda of seeing her bang is a little too wide for me, so I'm gonna take out these corner pieces. That's better. So we're falling more in line with that arch. Okay. So to cut our first section of our bangs, I'm not gonna take this and just go straight across with my scissors. I'm gonna cut in the middle first and then I'm gonna slightly keep my hands at an angle on each side to get the round shape kind of going there. So we're gonna come right in at the middle. And again, this is gonna be more of a full fringe. So I'm gonna kind of cut it right in the middle of the nose and I can always cut it shorter after the fact. And then we're gonna add in our sides. And again, we're gonna angle our fingers down ever so slightly. So I'm not going straight across with it. You're gonna angle. So we're coming here to our other side, angle your fingers down. And you can even angle your scissors as well and come up into it. All right, so now we have our first section here cut of our bangs to kind of give us our guide. And what I'm gonna do next to finish out my sectioning, I'm basically going to bring the whole middle mohawk section of her hair 
into its own section with the sides out. So sort of at, I believe this is the apex. Okay, so I'm gonna section that off right now and then you wanna just secure your sides first. So just pin those back nice into place. Okay, so now that we have this little mohawk done, we're gonna open that back up and everything is gonna come forward. Okay, so we're gonna take our next section now of our haircut. Again, I don't like to pull everything forward and cut. Um, you wanna sort of elevate as you're cutting these top layers for your shag. So with your first cutting of your bang, you wanna keep that sort of pulled down. You don't wanna angle your hands out. So now with your second section here, instead of just coming down and meeting it, we're just gonna slightly pull out, just very slightly to give a little bit of elevation and lift. So again, we're gonna come right in the middle, start at it. Instead of bringing it down, we're just bringing it slightly out. And then I like to start point cutting. Again, start keeping your fingers at a slight angle as you work down your section. Come in on the other side, angle those hands, point cut into it. And the reason I like to do more of a point cut is the whole point of a shag is to be very textured, soft, um, if you're doing blunt cuts the whole time, you're just gonna end up needing to do a lot more texturizing at the end. And then we're just gonna come in, take our next section. And again, we're just gonna keep slight elevation moving up through this top section. You can always see your guide. Remembering to angle your hands as you move through the outer pieces. I'm taking about just barely under half an inch for each section. If you're comfortable, you can take a little bit bigger, but I just like to be on the safe side. That way you can always see your guide. Once you've cut too much, it's kind of hard to fix the problem. So that's why it's important to just take small sections so you can easily see through. And then you can pull down as you need to, working through to make sure everything's lining up. got two sections left here on her very top mohawk. So I do wanna make one mention that's important. This haircut is easiest if you're standing directly in front of your client and pulling everything towards you. Obviously I'm standing off to the side a little bit just for camera angles. But if you are doing this in salon or at home on somebody, you wanna stand directly in front of their head. And then this mannequin that I'm cutting on, actually I don't have to really, a little bit over here cut much. Um, I did a shorter layered tutorial on this mannequin a couple weeks ago. I'll link that video below in the description. 
So that top piece, I didn't have to cut as much. If your client already has layers, sometimes this cut is easier. If they have longer hair, it's gonna be a little bit more work and time. Um, let me know in the comments if that's something you would like me to show you on another mannequin that's longer to how you can cut into the layers a little bit first to make it easier moving into this haircut. So now that we have her top section done here, we're gonna come into the sides. And to bring in the sides, you're just gonna start off coming in with a section just right along the face. Again, I'm working in, I'm working in sections that are very small, that way I can always see. And you're gonna bring, again, everything towards you. So you would wanna stay standing right in front of your client and you're just gonna bring everything towards you. So you're gonna meet at the last section of your guide with the bangs. So we can see that there is a slight angle forming here. And when it's turned to, when it's put down, you can see the flow. So you can do this one of two ways. You can either come in, keep an angle there with your fingers and sliver down, or you can stand on the other side, have your fingers at an angle and come up from the very bottom of that section and work your way up. So that's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, all personal preference so we're gonna come in I'm gonna do a little bit of slivering so I see my guide right here I'm gonna meet it and just go straight down and then I'll show you if you're working your way up towards it I like to take a little bit at a time essentially keep my fingers at an angle and your scissors and come up into it. And we're just gonna work our way down, again, taking a little bit at a time. Bring everything forward. Again, we're trying to basically meet our way down to the bottom length without removing too much of that length at all. all right, now we're just gonna take our next section. So like I said, you can either sliver down or cut up into it. It's personal preference. I tend to always just sort of do a mix of both, honestly. I find that I sometimes just get better control depending on the section or how the hair is laying. Um, so don't be afraid to use both methods. There's not one like perfect way to do it. take our last section We're gonna take our last section here for this side again bring everything forward towards you keeping that angle going
And then just sort of check that, so to speak. This I kind of do it the same way I do with my other haircuts when I'm doing face framing. I'll just kind of come in and swoop everything up and cut in where I need to. I'm kind of working my way. So you're gonna come in and twist and point cut. Always remember to point cut this entire haircut. You don't wanna do any super blunt cutting. Um, you're gonna add a lot of texturing when we're done at the end, but you don't need to cut anything blunt. Just that very first bang section is the only thing that I will cut blunt because I just wanna make sure I'm making a nice guide. Okay, so now that we have our first side done, we're just gonna come in and do the same exact thing on the other side. Respray the hair if you need to. You wanna make sure the hair has enough um, dampness to it. Once it's dry, the layers start kinda getting harder to comb through and they lay a little bit differently. So I'm gonna spray that down. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna come in and take our very first section here. I'm gonna clip this back and remember that hair is gonna be going forward. And we're gonna be doing the same thing. Everything is coming towards you. So again, we're gonna keep those fingers angled down. Come up from your lower part here where it's longer and cut up into it and kind of I don't know if you can see me, I'm twisting my scissors a little. That helps create the angle as well. Then I can see my longest piece here. So I'm coming up from there into that top layer or top section. And that's flowing really nicely. And then just come in, take your next part, clip the rest of the hair back. Again, keeping those sections nice and small so we can really see through to our guide. This piece is down here. Angle those scissors and cut up into it. I usually find um, with doing the front layers face framing really with any face framing, but even especially this, one side of the head is a little bit easier sometimes to do depending on um, what side you're kind of more dominant on. And then we're coming in with our last section here. Everything forward. Keep those hands twisted, your fingers at the angle. the same way as I did the other side. Bringing everything forward again and then just slightly twisting. Point cut where you need to. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got our whole first front section done. Uh, this is actually a fairly easy haircut too, time-wise. Um, because you are cutting so much into the sides with it, as you can see here, it gets pretty thin looking at the ends. That's where like that mullet aspect comes in. So now I'm gonna show you guys how we match up the back. Okay, so now that we're to the back, again, this whole lower nape section right around the occipital bone is gonna be left out of its own section. We're not cutting any of this. Um, so you can put that in a ponytail, however you feel to secure it. I just take some clips do one on each side to keep it nice and tight there. And then I'm gonna actually spray this down a little. And then to give myself a cleaner guide, I'm gonna come in and take my first section. Almost this is gonna be sort of my guide section in a sense. Doing about an inch, half an inch. And then we're gonna clip these outer two sections out of the way. All right, so now to cut the back, like I said, everything in the front goes towards the face, you're pulling it towards you. The back, you're cutting almost like normal layers within a sense, um, you're gonna be moving rounded with the head. So each section you pull up, you're gonna pull it straight up from where you're grabbing. And as you move down, I like to kinda leave out that last piece so I'm always moving rounded with the head and work your way down. So essentially, when you let your layer out, it's gonna all flow really nice. So you're gonna bring up the top layer from your front section and the top section of this back, pull it up. Like I said, this mannequin already had some shorter layers, but you would match up your guide here and then you're gonna just move down through this back. So up, cutting this. Let out that top, take my next piece, keeping it rounded with the head. Next piece, all that hair out. And then as you kind of come down the head, you're not pulling straight out, you wanna keep going with the flow. So you are gonna here and there angle your fingers down a little bit because again, we're meeting this length at the bottom. So our last piece from our section, we're at an angle here and cut. So that's gonna flow really nice and now we're just gonna take our sections Again, working in small sections. I don't like to go too big. You wanna always make sure you see that guide. Okay, so we're coming into our next section here. We're gonna pull this straight up, cut into it. Like I said, this mannequin had some shorter layers already, but as you go down the head, you're moving with the curve of your head for your section. And again, we're point cutting. You don't wanna do any blunt cutting. You wanna keep those ends nice and soft. And then if you want, as you're moving further into the corners of the head, if you want to clip off your other sections that you've already cut to keep it cleaner, you can do that as well. Okay, now we're gonna add in 
this last section here. Again, spray down the hair if needed, that way it's all nice and damp. And again, remember as you're moving down your back sections, you're gonna kinda slightly wanna angle your hands because we're meeting the layer, the length at the bottom, not the layers. Well, it's layered somewhat, but if you have to angle your fingers, that's completely fine. And again, like I said, as you're moving around to your side, corner sections, if you wanna clip the hair out of the way to keep it nice and clean, feel free. So yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this before or not. If I did, I'll just repeat myself. If your client already has, let's say like a shorter layered haircut like this mannequin did, it is a little bit easier to do this haircut um, rather than when the hair is, let's say like all one length, you've got a lot of hair that you've got to work through and cut. So let me know in the comments below if that is something you would like to see on how you can kind of cut into the layer some first to take out some of that length to make it a little bit easier because if the hair is like down to here and you're trying to cut really short pieces, it can be a little overwhelming and time consuming. So I like to often a lot of times kind of pre-cut some shorter layers in there just at random knowing I'm gonna go in and clean everything up. So let me know if that's something you would like me to show you guys in another tutorial. And again, we're just going along with the roundness of the head. Like I said, angle those hands. And I do find I angle a little bit more in the corners for some reason. Um, I feel like it's the way that the hair lays, but I do notice that when I cut this type of haircut. So we've got all of our back done. And then I'm gonna take out my clips here. And then one thing I like to do before going to dry the hair is I'll just come in just to make sure it blends with that very bottom piece. I'll come out, twist, and everything is actually lining up really well. But if you're worried about that, see there, I can cut a little bit. If you're worried about that, go ahead and do that before drying just to kind of give yourself peace of mind if you're nervous and new to this haircut. But I promise you taking the nice small sections, taking your time, it all really does flow in well. That's what's nice about this haircut. And also it's supposed to be really messy. So if everything doesn't line up exact, it sort of plays into it. And we're gonna be texturizing anyway, so you're creating even more unevenness to this, um, you obviously want it to flow, but after you get it dry, you'll always see something you might need to cut. Okay, yeah, so we've got our shortest piece up nice and high with all this length. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her dry, and then we get to even more fun with texturizing. Okay, so we've got her fully styled. So 80s, I love it. She needs a ton of texturizing to really kind of start piecing this up. I don't know if anyone watches Stranger Things, but I feel like she looks like Mrs. Wheeler from like season one and two. It's killing me. So we've got a ton of layers everywhere. A lot of movement. And um, so like I said, we're gonna go in and texturize. I'm gonna use both a razor and probably my texturizing shears. Um, all this movement. So we're just gonna start off first with texturizing her bangs. 
They're very heavy. We want to get that nice and PC. And like I said, we are doing, it's definitely a full bang, but there can be a little bit of separation if you want. And then as they grow out, you can split them even more for that curtain bang look if that is what your client is going for. So like I said, I'm going to start off with my razor first and I don't really have a rhyme or reason with my texturizing. I feel like the more it looks kind of like messy and crazy and the more random it is, the better it comes out. Okay, so she has a very heavy bang here. So we're gonna just kind of cut into that. So again, I don't have a rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna come in with my razor and start cutting in to soften. So with the razor cutting, you don't want to do it super hard. Um, you're kind of like coating the outer layer, so to speak, nice and gentle with it. I want to shorten this top part. Like I said, I kind of have, I mean, in this area, I'm trying to cut into this a little bit more. So I am trying to go I have a method here, but when I get throughout the rest of the hair, I don't have as much as a method to my madness. She needs to be just a little shorter in this corner. And then the one nice thing, as you're going through and texturizing, you'll get to see if there's any areas you've got to tweak. Um, so just tweak as you go if you need any cutting done. So in here, she was a little too long on this side. So that's just even that out a little bit better. And then I'm basically gonna just work around her whole entire head with my razor. Um, I'm gonna section her off sort of, so that way I can get nice razoring everywhere throughout the hair, not just on that top outer layer. And actually, when I did the shorter layer haircut on this mannequin last time, I didn't really even texturize her a lot, so her hair is actually super thick. And you don't necessarily have to texturize a ton with this haircut. Like, some people might not want it quite as texturized, but I feel like a real shag is pretty textured, so I would just make sure you're really talking that through with your client before you start the haircut to make sure that they want it is PC and textured looking. Come around and do the same on the other side. A little heavier in here. And again, like I said, you can kind of come in and cross check in some spots as you're moving through with your texturizing. So now we're gonna come into the back and do the same thing with a little bit, just enough to give it, the back actually doesn't look as bulky to me as the front did. And again, no real rhyme or reason. You can opt to also do a lot of deep point cutting if you want. Um, I just like the razor for this type of haircut. I feel like it kind of pieces it up, messes it up a little bit more than deep point cutting. Let's say your client wants some texture, but maybe not as much as a razor, then point cutting would be the option that you'd want to do that. And um, if they don't wanna lose a lot of bulk, just point cut on the ends. Don't cut as deep into it, so that way you maintain their thickness and you're just softening the outer layers or the ends. I'm gonna come in and just 
cut in a little bit more in this bottom piece flowing into the back. So I'm gonna bring it forward and just slightly nip. And then actually on your very underneath section where we didn't technically layer, if you feel like the ends here look a little too bulky, go ahead and either use your razor or you can opt to use your texturizing shears and just slightly kind of point cut into them just to soften those up if it's looking a little too bulky. Because like I said, we didn't really cut a layer, so to speak, on this bottom piece. So if you want to cut into that on the ends to just soften it up a little bit to blend with all the texture throughout the rest of the hair. The reason why I clipped out this bottom is so we don't cut any of that length. That's kind of your security blanket. So just go ahead and at the end of the haircut, if you need to add some texture to it, simply do that. Okay, but I feel like she's pretty. She's got a lot of movement to her. I am gonna texturize her bangs just slightly. I feel like they're just a touch too bulky. I think I'm gonna use my thinning shears for that. More so just on the kind of the top part. All right, so I am done cutting. We've got a nice, fun, super textured shag. She looks so 80s. Every time I look at her, I just laugh. But this is such a fun haircut to do. I don't get to do that often, so this was a lot of fun for me. Key points, when you are first creating that very first guide in the front with a bang, you wanna bring that down. And then as you go to the back of the head, slightly pull up for some elevation. That way you're creating a little bit of a layer, so to speak. Bring everything forward. I like to stand directly in front of the client, bringing it all straight towards me. Keep those fingers at an angle when coming down the face. And then again, in the back, you're gonna just go with the roundness of the head, bringing those layers out. And then I like to section off that very bottom layer so we're not cutting into the length. My preferred method to add the extra texture is with a razor. I like to just go in and have fun with it. You can also use your thinning shears and point cutting is gonna be ideal for clients who maybe who don't want it so PC. But yeah, this is a fun cut. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next week.